So I'm on Dunnington Town Square. That's Dunnington near Sheffield. There's a Dunnington in Somerset and also a Dunnington in the northeast as well at Newcastle. Now I'm told when I was a, a school kid, when we went to Anston Park, that Din came from the name of the person who ran the community. Ing was a clearing and Tun was a hill. So how true that is I don't know, but sounds uh, logical. So I came out to uh, Anston, the next village in 1966, which had a population of about 3,000 then, it's now about 11. And Dinnington, where I am at the moment, had a population of about 5,000 back then, when it had a colliery, and it's now got a population of about 11,000. So our community is about 22,000, about the same size as Retford but we don't have the facilities. And this video is like a post lockdown, but also to actually uh, sort of give a bit of a way forward as well. So I'm being negative and positive at the same time. So here we have the Venus restaurant. It's got quite a good name. Originally it was the uh, Dean's restaurant. It had a delicatessen here as well and a sweet shop, I think. So I remember this when I was a kid, coming down to uh, Cubs in Dinnington. So I'm on the uh, square part of Dinnington, and I'm stood on what would have been the old bus stop, but that's now a bus station. So we've got the old Falcon pub, which is now the Royal Elephant, closed down probably 15, 20 years ago, and became the Royal Elephant. We haven't actually got a pub left in Dinnington. It's, it's an old working class community, not one pub. We've got one working men's club left. I think there's a snooker club that's a sort of pub as well, but so we've got St. Leonard's Church just there. We've got the village cross that somebody trashed, hit it with a car. They said it was an accident, but to me, it looks a little bit more than an accident. It looks as though somebody did it on purpose, but, you know, who's, who's to say? But to me, visually, that's what it looks like. So we've got Dinnington Cross. Like I said, it was a colliery town. I think the pit shut down in 1992. I think the strike was 84, if I'm right. People probably correct me on any details, so I can only go on what I know and what I believe. So. This was originally the Falcon Garage, and there was also a gymnasium there, it's now fl flats. So I'm now going to walk down the actual high street. Oh, one last thing, if you go right up there, where you can see the Pelican Crossing, you find Dinnington Hall down there, but Dinnington Hall is no longer a hall, it's a old people's home. So that's like another sort of facility denied to the general community, I think, because it was ran by Deans, I think, as a banqueting hall at one bit. It originally belonged to the Athorpe family, if I'm correct. We had four house bases at Dinnington Comprehensive, Osborne, Atfield, Seagrave and Athorpe. And I've just found out, I've just noticed that they've actually spelt Hatfield wrong because the family name is... Uh, Spelt differently. It's not field F I E L D, it's uh, E I L D. So I don't know if that's done on purpose or not. So we got Hall Farm, this was a farm, but it's now been turned into uh, residential. I think the family mostly live there. So the actual high street was actually recovering from the pit being closed down in 92 and then guess what they did, they shut all the banks down and that about finished the high street off before the lockdown even came along. So here we have like, I think this was a small, small holding in the past. I remember when I was a kid walking down to school this was, had, um, was storing farm equipment on here. 
looks like they're building more houses. Anywhere they can build houses now around Dinnington, they're building houses. I'm sure the population's always increasing, but I think the population's increased five to 10 million more due to mass immigration, which means we're building on our green belt. And uh, rather than going for productivity, we went for cheap labor. So I've come on Sunday morning hoping it's going to be nice and quiet. I won't get disturbed by anybody I know or anybody who just wants to shout and scream. So that was that bar, which was the old barley corn uh, working man's club. I don't know if that bar is still open or not now. Be interesting if anybody knows if that bar's still open or whether it's closed again. Just here was the old Nat West Bank which shut down a few years ago. It's now financial planners or something. Not quite the same. But I'll let you choose the high street for yourself. Where you see like the mock, well, I'm assuming it's mock Georgian. Dinnington hasn't been around that long. That was the Midland Bank HSBC. That shut before the Nat West, and then we had the Nat West shut. Previous to that, we'd had an Halifax bank here that shut as well. So rather than going down both sides of the high street, I'm just gonna keep switching from one side to the other. Oh, I've just noticed the old HSBs, he's now Danny's Diner. We didn't really need more food outlets in Dinnington. We've just got too many of those. Blue Lizard, Reptile, that's quite a good place, that's, uh, if you like, uh, wildlife. You can see the number of places shut down. What I'm trying to do is sort of raise awareness where we've got to and where we can go. So uh, that was a thing. chemist, Lloyd's, and now there's only one Lloyd's. There's a Lloyd's next to the actual doctor's surgery. Then got a few little shops here. And then we've got the Aldi behind. got bad inflation at the moment but I think anybody with half a brain knew that we had to pay for all the lockdown and we're now paying for it but the problem with people who got from the lockdown aren't necessarily the ones um, who are paying for it some of us didn't get a penny during the lockdown and uh, we're expected to pay back for the government's bad decision so that was uh, the Halifax it then became a state agent Now this was a florist and I think it's Julie's dance studio and that got burnt down by somebody. I think it was an accident. I think he set a fire but he didn't mean to burn the building down and this has been like this for years, nothing. This is the old market hall, that shut down during the lockdown. And I think that was the old Comrades Club in the past. Anybody from Dunnington can probably add to my uh, video with the facts. Interesting here, we've got the office of Alexander Stafford, the first Conservative MP of Rother Valley. And Alexander's very prominent in the community, but nothing's ever changed. I think there was supposed to be a big investment of, I'm not sure how many million on Dunnington, but it's never come yet. And why the investment went to um, Rother Valley is beyond me for a private enterprise, when if they'd have spent 10 million on the high street that would have benefited far more people and our community and really most of it is that they want to clean Dinnington up and give us some extra facilities we have a bit of an antisocial problem in Dinnington and one of the things that re rectify that to some degree is actually facilities for the kids I don't think there's actually a park in Dinnington for the kids I think there's a hard area 
on East Street or School Street and I think that's about it so there's no real facilities we seem to look after the graveyards better than we do our kids so this used to be the local butcher where it's sandwiches and deli and this guy's barely scraping by with what he earns I don't know how he manages So you can sort of go in out of Dinnington, we've got a bit of a one-way system in Dinnington. Like I said, Alexander is prominent in the community, but we've not seen any changes. We don't see police very often on the high street. They seem to come up after the event, not preventing it. And we did put a petition in with three and a half thousand signatures to reopen the police station. We didn't want the original police station, we just wanted just a metal cabinet on the bus station would have been fine where the police parked the cars in the morning. They were around some of the day, but then went out on the beat and we want beat officers, we don't want people driving in around in cars. They don't see anything. So this area here, this is where I'm going to say I can see a future thing. I think this area should be the gateway into Dinnington. It should be like a sort of mini winter gardens if you've ever been to Sheffield. Seen the winter gardens there. I think it should be a mini winter garden with uh, nice shopping boutiques. An indoor sort of cafe area and behind there is the market area, it's gated off at the moment but I'm not going to go in but it's not very nice the market area and then behind there is the bus station so when you're coming in from the bus station this is the first thing you see, I don't think it's great. Now there is a town plan that Dave Smith, who's the uh, chairman of the town council, he's gone for a, a town plan for the place where they've got some control over things, but without any money coming in, the plan's nothing. I don't think the plan goes far enough. And rather than having the market behind this area of shops, I'd actually close the uh, high street off twice a week on a Friday and a Saturday and have a market down the middle but I try and encourage a different type of market one with uh, different types of food and various things like that like a continental type market so this has been done up lately I think this might have been empty I'm not sure But we do have a, every year for the uh, switch on of the lights and I'm not, uh, they have a, like a, they shut the road down for the evening and then they have like a fair on here. And like I say, they ought to be doing that on Friday and Saturday, but not a fair actually, have a, a market, a decent continental market. Here we have the Nottingham Building Society. I don't know how they keep going. But that's like the only bank we've got. The post office shut down. It was actually in Heron Food. And when it shut down, it, uh, it's moved to the resource centre. But now I think it's only open on a Thursday and Friday. That's your postal service in Dinnington. Absolutely shocking. There was an outcry when it shut down, but when things are quietened down, that's it. Now here... We see a Georgian front and a for sale sign. This was the pound stretch as this shut down. I think there was two reasons. One was high rent and I think the other one might have been shoplifting. But please, if you're from Dinnington, you know anything I don't know, please uh, comment. If I've got any facts wrong, please let me know. It's not intentional. So this was originally a picture house when I was growing up. 
it was like one of the main superstores, sort of the Aldi and uh, Tesco of the day. I've even forgot what, what it was called. Oh, sorry, Woods, yeah, sorry, Woods Supermarket. And when you used to go in the back of Woods, you could see the old picture house. Like in the storeroom, you could still see the uh, stage and everything. So, but a few years ago, they just completely ripped it out. They used to have steps to go up to it, and they were ripped out. But you can see again, that's another shop that's shut. I noticed them clearing it out the other day, and that's quite a big shop. Here we have the village cobbler, but it's not just a cobbler. He also sells iron shoes and shirts and trousers, etc. suits. Now, you'll have seen videos of Constable Lane, probably on the news, with first Sajid Javid and then Rishi Sunak stood on that place doing a photo shoot. And uh, nothing's changed since the visits. Still no money in Dinnington, but I think it's a general clean-up, really, more than anything. I don't think you've got to encourage private businesses to come into Dinnington. If you just go around down the road to the Tick Hill, it's a thriving community. And uh, it's got more high-end shops. But the cobbler, yes, is expensive, but he's trying to do something different. So that's sort of the approach from the bus station, but I think they could improve on it by knocking the market area down and making that into a small winter garden, like an indoor shopping area, whatever. We have the Lyric Theatre here. They have shows every year. We also have the base for Dinnington St. John's. Same again, Dave Smith said he wanted an opening to the public on the high street. I don't think it's actually uh, open enough or open in the way I thought it would be open to the public. Could be wrong, but um, I expected the staff from the uh, town councils to be sat in there, but I think they're still sat in the offices at the back. It sort of defeats the object, I think. That's the lyric. Behind here, there's some work going on, I think, to clean the area up at the back and little shops and things like that. It's so quiet, I think I set off at half seven this morning, I didn't think I'd get up, but I did. Now just here, this whole area, from there to there was White's shop. It was a toy store, it was absolutely fantastic toy store, but the guy didn't like kids anywhere near his store because probably some kids did steal, and he assumed we all steal. So um, he sold kids toys, the, it was a fantastic toy shop, like the Greg Gates of Dinnington in, Din in uh, Dinnington rather than Sheffield, it was uh, fantastic, but we did have a fantastic shopping centre when the colliery was open, and um, there's now double the number of people, and the shopping centre's terrible, as you can see, I'm, you can make your own judgement on it. Good DIY place there. I think it's better doing the video when it's quiet like this because I'm number one is if you're in Sheffield, nobody notices your videoing. Come into a village like this and they get a little bit uptight about your videoing. And I don't want people shouting while I'm trying to do a video or giving me any grief. So we've got a carpet shop here, I think he's online. Probably most businesses are nowadays. You've got the green grocers, I think that's um, balls. Um, originally we had two of them, this one is just more like a pet and garden centre and florist, whereas the other one he had further up was actually a 
vegetable place and what happened was we ended up with another market stall outside his at, um, shop every every week that so he ended up shutting his shop down probably because of the competition or it might not have been that I don't know and then guess what the um, the market stall that were outside every week disappeared as well so that was great that um, but there isn't now another I forgot there's another vegetable and fruit shop at the top somebody who had a market stall on the market decided to have a shop as well so we got Parlo's Mediterranean food it's always packed but it always looks absolutely packed to me I won't ever go in there but other, some people like it another shut down shop there I think that was a money lender shop if I'm right but really it's just Dinnington needs a bit of a tarting up encouragement to bring better businesses in it's nearly food, mainly food shops around this area Morton Road off licence, poor guy got his uh, window rammed in and his shutters. Uh, somebody, I think somebody had an argument with him and then ran the car into it and it took him a while to get that repaired. Here we used to have a music shop, sold organs and all various music things. Like I said, it was top quality shops in Dinnington at one bit when there was a collar here. Half the number of people and now we've got double the number of people and there's nothing nothing much here anymore. This was our original library. It's quite an adequate library. At the end of the day, it's the books in the library and they've moved into a new resource center. And I wouldn't say the books are any better now than they were before. So, um, and it's not the same. It's not like a library anymore. Got the Methodist church down here. If you're from Dinnington, any ideas to improve it? I think the main thing is to clear the market area up and have a weekly market on the high street. We need more facilities for kids. I think we need a swimming pool, sports centre. We've been left out by Rotherham Council. I mean, the kids, when we were at school, we had a swimming pool that the public could use at nights and during the weekend and then the kids used, like me, learned to swim in it. Well the kids have got nothing now, they'd have to go to Maltby or Aston. So both Maltby and Aston have had their baths replaced by Rotherham Council, but we haven't. That's a little bit unfair. Um, the money could have been split three ways um, and it wasn't. So we're really coming a little bit off the high street, but there's still some facilities down here I want to show you. So if I take you down here, we've got a dentist down here. We've got a dentist and a bit further down it's Dinnington uh, Health Practice. So we're sort of moving away from the main town centre, but there are some facilities down here. And where we've got, it says transport interchange, and public footpath. Takes you down to Tesco. But one of the problems is with the bus station, I think it shuts after a certain time, so they said they built it to make it safer for people, but the times at night when it needs to be safer, it's shut down. I think the original bus station was, it was like, it moved out to Falcon Square and then it moved onto the main road, and I think it was better protected at night that it was better protected from the rain. The new station, when it's shut, you're actually outside the front of it. You end up getting soaked. Behind here is the miners' wealth. Oh, it was the old miners' welfare. 
and then they built Dunnington Resource Centre on it, a solar building as far as I'm concerned. I got involved with Dunnington Area Regeneration Trust at the time it was being built and I was asked to look through the books for the building and you could never find any of the costs for the building. They were all in they should have gone through the Dunnington Area Regeneration Trust books. They didn't. They went through the books of Rotherham Council and it was a big black hole so you don't know really who got paid what. So this is a resource centre. The police were had a hub in here at one bit. Um, and I don't think they're in here anymore. I think after the lockdown they moved out. But like I said, we didn't want the old station opening back up. We wanted just a temporary facility and a shop front on the high street, um, being a base for the place where they park the cars up in the morning. Rather than going to malt bit of sign in, they could come and sign up here. So they were working as soon as they came in. But we like to see them actually doing the beat. We like to like to see you walking down the streets, and we want to see you down the streets during the day and the night. Um, you're there to prevent crime. You're not there to clean up after the crime. Just to keep statistics, because your statistics for police for the crime in Dinnington's a load of rubbish. Because nobody reports it. Because why should they bother reporting crime that they don't believe you're going to deal with? So this was the miners welfare and it was a really good facility. It looked it was actually like a nightclub when you went inside back in uh, back in the 80s. Called it the Stute. I'm just gonna move across the road because I can give you a better angle on this. So here we've got the Coronation Park for Dunnington where the other remembrances but like I said we've got a, the, the local uh, town council look after this they look after the massive graveyard on Park Avenue but what facilities do they look after for the kids where's the parks for the kids it's just uh, unbelievable really we're looking after the dead more than we're looking after the living and that's something wrong I don't think we should let the cemeteries go to ruin but what about the people who are living? What about their facilities? So now we've got Dinnington Town Football Club. They've had a, I don't know if it's a synthetic grass pitch or it's just a synthetic pitch put down. Cost quite a bit of money. <laughs> Cost quite a bit of money and they've now got a bit of an advantage when they're playing in football matches. But they're not taking advantage of it because they lost again yesterday, I think 4-2 at home to Yorkshire Main. Now, when they were doing it, I said to the resource centre manager, uh, what are you doing about the stands? And there's no stands, he took the old stands down and there's no stands. He said, oh, we'll sort that out later. To me, that's a bit of a joke, really. It's a shame. It's nice to see they've got a banner up because there's a, a banner now saying... Home of Dunnington Town Football Club. Now Steve Toyne really had the club going in the past, but they were in the NCL Premier Division. I've been here for a match with about a thousand people for the FA Cup. And there was also, I think, about 1,100 people against Maltby for the preceding match as well. So the crowds could come out if they were successful. Resource Centre Park in here. So we're nearly at the bottom of uh, Dennington. Just over here, if I can pull it in. That was Rother Valley College. It was further education for particularly the mining, farming I think, in the past and that shut down. Rotherham College took it over and shut it down. I think it's now to do with mental health and kids having problems. But it's a massive place. So really, I just want to show people the state of Dunnington. 
and give some ideas for improvement. I'm trying to be positive as well as negative. I'm just going to show you where the police station was. Told they couldn't afford to run a police station, but they're reopening them in various places, but not around Dennington, probably because we put three and a half thousand signatures in, and uh, they didn't like the rebellion. But I'd like to respect the police again. I'd like to see police actually actively patrol the communities during the day and night. Six o'clock onwards is the most important time to actually patrol the community. But we're just not seeing them visible anyway. I don't think driving past in a car is adequate. I don't think that's policing to me. Much more comfortable sat in a car than actually walking around and getting wet into it. So that was the old police station there. It's been turned into some other facility now. Well, that's my quick view of Dinnington. If I've got any facts wrong, please correct me. If you've got any ideas for improving Dinnington that are constructive, please, please shout up. And if I've missed any historical facts about Dinnington, also please add them in, because I've been living in Anston since 66. So I know a lot about what goes or has gone off in Dinnington in the past. Oh, just one other thing. Just there where you can see those flats. We used to be the Lord Nelson Bambi's uh, night spot. Quite a place in the 1980s. So that's my quick tour of Dinnington over post-lockdown and what I see as a future.